Welcome to English 1102, which is a follow-up course to English 1101. You should have made at least a C or better in English 1101 to take this particular course, because English 1101 sets the foundation on which we will build in this particular course this semester. Now, while English 1101 focused mainly on composition research, this particular course actually adjust that focus a bit more to include the study of literature as well as writing and researching literature. And by literature I do mean uh, fiction, short stories, poems, and drama mainly. While these may not be some of your favorite subjects to study, one of the great values of understanding how to analyze and to interpret and to infer when reading a work of literature is that it, those skills are transferable to almost anything that you read or study. Um, as a matter of fact, it's one of the top five skills, critical thinking skills, that uh, employers are looking for in the country. So if nothing else, and I hope we'll read things that you enjoy and uh, and and we'll work on your, your ability to write clearer and better and to do um, more sophisticated types of research, but if nothing else, I, I do hope that you will get a benefit from learning how to read insightfully and carefully and to be able to discuss what you read clearly. Now this little video is an orientation video to help you be successful in this course. So it contains three main components. First, we're going to talk about how to get started in this Blackboard course. Some of you may have taken uh, online courses before using the Blackboard uh, Learning Management System. Others of you will be completely unfamiliar, but I hope that by the time this video is over, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable with how to approach your assignments and how to get what you need out of the course. The second section of this video will have to do with how to keep up how to be successful, how to really, what I call, thrive rather than just survive the semester and to make top grades. And finally, the last section, we'll talk about how to troubleshoot. Where do you find answers to your questions? Or if you get behind, what can you do to still be successful during this semester? So we're going to start with the first section getting started. And this has to do with how to begin well this semester. Now I've got some bullet points here, but these are the main things that you need to think about as we begin um, this semester. And the first is to begin by reviewing the Blackboard course layout. When you log into our Blackboard course, it looks something like this. Now please realize that every instructor is different and how he or she approaches, approaches both the setup and the um, organization of his or her course will vary. Um, so please be aware, a lot of times students only look at what is immediately on their screen and don't realize that um, they can, if you scroll down, you'll see that there is more information here. Um, so please be aware that um, I've had students who actually when they open up a particular folder and they only see what's immediately on their screen and that often depends just on how you know large your screen is. They don't scroll all the way to the bottom and, and they've missed other assignments so please be aware that you always need to scroll down. Now the, our menu is here in blue on the left hand side of the page. Okay and what the menu does uh, this contains you know this is what drives the course. Uh, anytime you want to open something, all you need to do is click on it. So, for example, the announcements. Uh, if you click on announcements, you can see. Now, um, these are announcements that honestly are not available to you yet. Um, I have I've got them closed off, but uh, anything that I do want you to see will be there. That's one way to keep up with what's going on with the course. Um, next is the syllabus. We're going to look at that in more detail in a second. I do keep a course calendar. This is uh, the main tab, though, the, uh, the Lessons tab, um, and this is where you will access all of the work that you will do in a semester. Then you can keep up with your grades by selecting My Grades. I'll keep a running average, so as soon as I've graded something, it will be available to you with the grade and with comments uh, if you select My Grades. And my understanding is, and I can't show you because I have the instructor view rather than the student view, but my understanding is that if students um, select My Grades and then click on the score, it will itself, it will open up and you can actually go back and review what you've missed. 
This is where you will send me an email. Um, you can use this tab to schedule an appointment with me, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, the reading journal will come in later this semester, so within a particular week's folder, if you have journal assignments, you will find them there. Blackboard Collaborate is a live um, system that allows us to communicate in real time. So we will have live lectures here. Um, if you schedule an appointment with me, we will use Blackboard Collaborate so that we can talk face to face if you like, but at the very least, if you, as long as you have some type of microphone device, um, that we can, or even you can call in using a cell phone, and we can talk in real time. NetTutor is a tutoring service, and we'll talk about that later, and then StudyMate. And um, StudyMate um, we'll talk about as well when we get into the second section. So this is to help you familiarize yourself with the, um, with the course layout. Now we're going to jump ahead and I'm going to, we're going to look at the syllabus and I want you to note some important information on the syllabus, okay? If we were in a face-to-face -face course, I would pause at this point and I would ask you to pull out a pen or a highlighter and I would say, okay, this is the information in all of these pages that you really need to pay attention to. Again, to, to open any assignment, all you have to do is click on its title. All right, so select the title and it will launch your syllabus. And this is the starting place. Once you kind of familiarize yourself a little bit with the layout of the course, what you want to do is to take a look at the syllabus because it's almost like a contract between the two of us. A lot of it, the format itself is not very exciting. It's what we call a canned format, which means no matter which course you take at um, GNTC, your syllabus is going to look the same, all right? It's actually generated for us, and we just plug in certain pieces of information. Now, if we were in a face-to-face -face class, what I would tell you to do is to highlight certain things. The first thing would be my office phone number, which is right here. Um, now, quite frankly, because of COVID, I'm working primarily from home these days. So um, the telephone number, I will get any recorded message in my email but that's probably not going to be our preferable means of communication, at least not if you need uh, immediate um, information. Uh, but I am monitoring email consistently throughout the day. So if you email me, and this is my email address, but I'm going to ask you to email me through Blackboard. And I'm going to emphasize this again in a minute. But the reason that I want you to email me through Blackboard is, uh, and the send email function is because it identifies to which course you belong. Now before the semester is over, hopefully, you know, I have a lot of students. I have usually between 100 and 150 students in a given semester. And this semester, all of the um, these students are taking online courses. And so what happens is, until I can remember which course you belong to, I can't answer your specific questions unless I know that information. So unless you identify it for me, and, and by the way, I have like three different English 1102 classes. So it's not enough to tell me English 1102, for example, if you have a question about one of your grades, because I don't know which class you're referring to, and that requires more time for me to dig. And if I'm in the middle of something, then I'm probably going to put off my response for a while. Does that make sense? But if you email me through Blackboard, it's very quick for me to see which course because it automatically identifies. It tells me uh, in the subject line which um, course you're, you're emailing from, and I can answer your information quickly. All right. I would also tell you to, the, uh, I'm on the Catoosa County campus, by the way. That's the reason I, I sometimes students are confused. Um, and think that, that, you know, they can meet me, you know, and they're, and they're at the Rome campus. Catoosa County's in Ringgold. I'm about 100 miles away. <laughs> All right. And, I, and once again, I'm working primarily from home due to the virus. So um, most of our, any appointments that we have will be, we'll try and we'll set up online. Okay. Um, we will we'll have, you know, it's, it's a lot like if you're familiar with Zoom, it's a lot like a Zoom call. Um, but we will, we will set it up that way. Now, these are my office hours. I am guaranteed to be at my desk working. I mean, I'm there the rest of the time as well, most of the rest of the time as well. But these are the hours that I've set aside Monday through Thursday to make sure to answer questions, to be available to you, and Blackboard collaborate so that should you need to meet with me, I'm there. Okay. Very important. Please note. We do not, you do not need to purchase a textbook for this course. 
Um, we have compiled a series of, of uh, resources and links um, in the library, but what I do is in each week's lesson, which I'll show you in a minute, you will link out and so you, um, you will not need to, to buy anything. All reading assignments will be self-contained within the particular um, lesson folder, okay? Now this course meets online and um, prerequisite, please notice you needed to have passed English 1101 with a C or better. Uh, and then this is a description of what I pretty much summarized to you at the beginning. Now the rest of this information has to do with COVID and please look over that at, um, as you have time. Next are the course competencies and objectives, and these are established at the state level. In order to receive credit for the course uh, for English 1102, and this course is transferable anywhere within the Georgia system, um, whether it be a state school or a lot of the smaller, tech, uh, smaller colleges will take our transfer credit as well. Um, but these are the, the three areas that we cover, reading and analysis of fiction, poetry, and drama, research, and then writing about literature. The instructional strategies, this is just the types of ways in which we'll cover information. Now, I would ask you if we were in that course to highlight this next information because this is, these are my attendance policies. Please note, you're expected to log in and do work in this course at least twice a week in order to keep up. I'm aware that there are plenty of students who on the day things are due, and normally that's Monday, my assignments open uh, normally Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock for the week's lessons and all the work that, that, are, that is contained within that week's uh, folder are due, uh, all the work is, is due the following Monday night. I'm aware that a lot of students put it off and do it at the last minute, but what I can tell you is those students don't usually make very good grades. Um, sometimes you can get away with it, but quite frankly I think you're quite aware anything you do at the last minute is not your best work ever. All right. Late work. I don't accept late work. So for example, if you have a small assignment due on Tuesday, uh, I mean due on Monday night and you try to turn it in on Tuesday, that assignment's probably not going to even appear anymore. It will be closed and you'll be shut out of it. All right. So you've got to sort of hit that window of opportunity. The only exception to this is um, large essays and normally I will take those up to three days late with a penalty. That's what this part talks about. Um, so, for example, if you turn in a paper to me, if it's due Monday night, and you turn it in Wednesday, that's two days late, right? Well, I've got a 10% per day penalty, so let's just say that you make an 83 on that paper when I grade it, but because there's a 20% penalty, you will make a fine, the final grade will be a 63, all right? But normally students don't turn in essays late because we go through a drafting process, a review process, you get feedback, so most everybody's ready to submit that final assignment when it's due. Okay. Now I do want to tell you though, I am happy to work with anybody. Uh, if you need an extension, please let me know in advance for any of the work. Um, if you If you're sick if something's happened and you're not going to be able to complete the work before the due dates. I just need to know before the due date. I don't grant extensions except in verifiable emergencies on the day work is due. Okay? And once again, that's almost always Monday nights at 11.59. Okay? So if you need an extension on any assignment with the exception of a test, um, I will be glad to grant it, but I need to hear from you either through email or a phone call prior to um, the due date that Monday. Okay. Now we do have what one what I call grace period and that grace period is later in the semester. It's in March. Uh, it will be marked on the calendar where you can make up three small missed assignments. Those do not include drafts or final papers or tests. You cannot make up a test. Once tests are graded and other students get the opportunity to look at those tests, um, you cannot um, go back and make up a test, all right? Because there's, they've already been, the answers have already been exposed, so to speak, okay? Also, it should go without saying, do not work with other students to submit work. If I see that happening, you will receive, that's called plagiarism, um, and it's cheating. 
And if you turn in the same responses, working together in group, now there will be um, a couple of opportunities where you will work with groups of people, but I'll assign the groups. And especially on tests, you should not look up answers online. You should not um, work with other students. Um, I hope this goes without saying, but, but unfortunately, I've had students fail the course because they've done that type of thing. So please be aware, do, do original work, do your own work, okay? Very important that you understand these guidelines. Now, as far as materials, you don't need anything other than, you know, logging into Blackboard. Um, you, all work does need to be created though using Microsoft Word, um, or at least saved as a Microsoft Word document, which is .docx. Um, I cannot open, for example, um, if you've got a, an Apple product and you create, um, I think it's called a, a Pages file, I can't open those. I, I don't have that option. Um, Google Docs, I can't open. You've got to save the whatever document you create as a, uh, a Microsoft Word file. Now I can open PDFs, .pdf, um, so if that's a, you have that option, you can save your documents that way. Uh, but please be aware that um, Blackboard is not set up to recognize those types of files. Okay. The good news is though that if you're a GNTC student, you have um, Microsoft Word products available um, or Microsoft Office products available to you for free as long as you're a GNTC student. Um, you should have covered this in the orientation session. And it's uh, under my GNTC, it shows you where you can actually access uh, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, and Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, final thing I want to go over right now, and then we're going to skip to the second section of this video. And that has to do with um, how I grade the assignment. Writing assignments, including essays and the final research paper, are 40% of your grade. That's a major part. All of the tests and quizzes are 40% of your grade. And finally, smaller assignments like discussion boards and other kind of uh, smaller work um, is 20% of the grade. All right, and that's the way our grade book is set up. Now, this information that talks about um, evaluating sources um, or how I'm going to evaluate your drafts and, and um, we will go over this in detail when the time comes. All right, I held a live lecture that actually uh, before every writing assignment that explains, and I do record them if you're unable to attend, but it explains my feedback, the feedback process, and what it all means. Important note, please do not submit work you've done for another class. Um, let's just say if you took this class before and you wanted to improve the grade or you didn't pass it, please do not submit to me work that you did for that class, okay? Um, second, don't do research for any assignment unless the assignment calls for it. Now it's fine with me if we read a, a piece of uh, literature and you don't really understand it and all the information that I provided you still need some extra help. It's fine with me if you get online and kind of look up and see what especially scholars have said and we'll talk more about that later in the semester but they help you understand but you can't actually use and present their work as your own. Does that make sense? Um, especially on tests and quizzes. Uh, please note, this is my plagiarism policy. All unintentionally plagiarized documents cannot receive above a 50%. Now, it's easy to tell the difference between what's intentionally plagiarized and what's not. For example, on a test, if you get off the test, you find something and copy and paste it as a response, that's intentional plagiarism. The entire test, not just that one question, will receive a zero. All right? So please be aware of that. Um, We'll talk more about this later in the semester. And then finally, you can look through this information. There are particular dates that are important throughout the semester. Um, and then finally, the last part of the syllabus uh, contains a student guide. But be aware that the student guide is simply um, what I think we're going to be doing and when I think we're going to be doing it. And the way that this course is organized it will be organized into um, three units. The first unit will cover short stories, and it, each unit has a particular theme and a particular 
paper as well as a test that covers all of the information. Um, so the first unit will be the first five weeks and it will have to do with um, time, place, and personal identity. We're going to focus on short stories and reading and analyzing and thinking about short stories. Um, and then you will, will compose a literary argument. That will be your writing assignment. And these are some of the short stories we may read. Okay, I'm, I change my mind a lot. If I see that a lot of students have read, you know, a, a particular work, then I'll often substitute something else. The second five weeks, all right, will be uh, the unit two theme will focus on poetry. The theme itself is it's a thin line between love and hate. It has to do with relationships and it's just in time for Valentine's Day. Um, so you'll have a, a poetry analysis paper that you're going to write. Um, for this particular um, five weeks and you'll have a unit two test as well as other smaller assignments. And then finally the last five weeks of the course um, the theme is a little knowledge is a dangerous thing and we will focus on reading drama and plays. Um, you will have a research paper that um, is not necessarily associated with this theme but that's kind of covers work we've done um, throughout this semester and you will have a unit three test. Please note I do not give a midterm and I do not give a final so you're welcome. Um, that's comprehensive. You just will have three unit tests, quite a few quizzes, some discussion boards, and some papers to write including a research paper. All right, back to our original PowerPoint you'll notice the last two bullets here We'll actually take the syllabus quiz after you look over the syllabus, which we've just reviewed, read course information folder contents, and complete the first week's assignments by the due date. So if we return here, syllabus here, lessons, the lessons tab is the tab that will, um, is where you access the actual um, course folders and information. Again, every week, starting with week one, this week, I open the folder, usually on Tuesday morning, but because this class, in this case, um, starts on Wednesday morning, obviously that's when the, the folder will open, and the assignments I'm giving you an extra day will be due Tuesday night. All right, so you have a full week to complete the assignments. Um, the, the course in for introduction and syllabus are contained here. Once again, to open anything, click the title. All right. Uh, there's another copy of the syllabus. There's a rubric that you can look over that's established by the English department for, you know, what co constitutes an ASA, a BSA, and so forth. I've got some notes here about online expectations. Um, a lot of them that I'm covering in this video. All right. And then to back, back out of this, you can either use the back folder or you can go back up here. This is called a breadcrumb and select lessons again to backtrack. And then, um, Every week with the week one folder, I include an overview of the contents of the folder, including due dates. So I tell you what's in the folder, a little bit about the information, and then it includes the due dates. Again, to open anything, so I click the title, and here it is. Please notice that in order to stay on the roll, the roster for this course, you must complete the syllabus reading check quiz by next Tuesday night because I have to turn in what's called no-shows after um, next Tuesday. And if you have not completed this assignment, I'm going to assume, it doesn't even matter if you log in. If you don't complete this assignment, I'm going to assume you don't intend to complete the course. All right, and you'll be taken off the roster. Um, then I have a diagnostic essay. And this is simply, you can look over it. Um, it's due next Tuesday night as well. S select the title. Here's the link. So once again, click anything. Don't click this until you've read this. All right. And that should help you. Um, that gets us started. And this little essay is something that you type. Now, just to, to show you how this is set up. Um, if you select the title, it gives an overview. It tells you the test has a limit of one hour um, to complete it. That's the reason you need to read the short story first. Then select begin. And then what I want you to do is, after you've read the prompt, here, click in and type your response. When you're finished, you know, make sure that you that you address the prompt that you've 
do everything that's asked of you here. Select Save and Submit. Okay, and this tells you that you did successfully submit the test. Okay, and then you select OK. Now again, I'm going to use the breadcrumbs to back up. Go back to week one. And then the final thing, um, you have a discussion forum that asks you a particular question and then asks you also to respond to two additional posts. And then I've got a video here that tells you how to create a thread in the forum and then how to respond to other posts. So be sure and watch that in, in advance. This will get you started on this week's lessons. Now, second part of the video, how to keep up. My recommendations are these. Always open a week's folder on Tuesday. All right. It opens Tuesday morning. See what kind of work is there. Sometimes there'll be more than others. Sometimes the reading assignment's really lengthy. Sometimes it's not. Uh, again, do not wait until Monday when things are due to turn them in and to do all the work because that's when students get into trouble. And I, I, again, I do not give extensions on the due date itself, so it's too late at that point. It's too late to ask me questions, especially students who wait till Monday night and then they try and fire off an email because they don't understand something or they get into some trouble. And I am, I'm not monitoring my email on Monday nights, okay? So it's too late at that point. Um, next, check your calendar and the folder summary for due dates. What I recommend students do is have a planner. If you haven't learned to be organized at this point, um, I use a planner to, for not only my, my work, um, important dates for work, but also just personal dates to keep up with what's happening in life. Um, so I strongly recommend that you take a look at the work and even if you don't intend to do it on Tuesday, look and see what the assignments are and then make plans to do the work. All right. Remember that I recommend that you log in at least two times a week to get everything done. So that's the make a plan part. All right. Again, do your work prior to Monday. Use study mate for notes and flashcards and then in, in, uh, contact me before the due date if you need an extension. So if we, if we go back here, um, a reminder that there's a calendar and I always put due dates on the calendar. So this will remind you of uh, when assignments are due. Now, because these assignments aren't opening until Wednesday, um, they're not showing up yet, but they will be uh, filled in and everything will be due here on, on this Tuesday. Okay. Um, and you can click on and, and keep your own calendar here. Also, as I mentioned, the due dates are listed here on the folder overview. All right. So all assignments should be completed. Uh, as well as every individual assignment contains its own due date, right? Again, usually, almost always, you have one week to complete the work. Now, StudyMate is a little feature that, uh, for those of you who take notes or create flashcards, all right, there's a tutorial that explains how it works. Um, you can actually download this on your uh, and use it on your app, uh, use it on your uh, your phone. Um, they've got a sample here that uh, if you want to take a look at it, that shows you how to do it. Um, but you can create your own new project. And one of the great things to do is um, like create flashcards, for example. Um, so let's just say short story. terms. All right. And save. Uh, description. These are the terms on which I will be tested this semester. All right. Save. All right. And now I'm going to edit. And you can do definitions, which of course um, add a definition and let's just say the term is going to be plot. Seek and then the definition sequence of events and a story. 
and you can save and then add another one and so forth. So um, this is a way that you can actually keep notes and come back and study later. All right. Now I'm going to use the uh, back arrow here at the top of the screen to go back here. All right. Finally, troubleshooting. The way to be successful in any course, especially an online course. But you know, if you were we were in a face-to-face -face course and you had questions, I hope you would feel comfortable enough to ask me the questions right in class. Well, please feel the same way um, in this course. Email me. Call if you need to. Um, I, I prefer email through Blackboard simply because it keeps a record of our conversation so that we can both refer back to it. Um, but communi but you know, certainly call if it, if it requires more discussion or more important, schedule an appointment. One of the uh, I've got this really handy dandy schedule an appointment feature here. All you have to do is click on it, and it takes you to you select a particular day. So let's just say that you want to schedule an appointment with me. Now, right now, I just have my office hours listed. All right. Um, so let's just say I want to jump ahead to the 12th. If it's letting me do that. Well, okay, let's just say that you want to schedule an appointment with me for Thursday at 7. All you have to do is click on this, all right, uh, on the time, and provide your name and your email. Click I'm a robot, and I get the email, and it's on my calendar, and then I will send you the link so that uh, for our particular appointment, okay? So it's a very simple process. Now, please be aware, I'm available at other times besides just 1 to 3.30. Um, but in that case, instead of using that schedule builder, um, this, this schedule mate here, and we're going to backtrack out of this. Instead of using schedule and appointment, send me an email, all right, and tell me when you like, you know, if, if this doesn't work for you, send, tell me what time does work for you, and then I will set it up. I just need some head start. So if you want to meet with me um, for, let's say, uh, at night or something, at 8 o'clock, please don't email me at 7.30, all right? I need a little bit of time to set it up. But let me show you how this will work. In Blackboard Collaborate, select Blackboard Collaborate, uh, and then select the title again to launch it. And here, um, the course room, um, all you have to do is select the course. I'll probably set up an appointment, and it will appear here. And all you have to do is click on it, and then Join Session. And you know, you don't have to have a, a you don't have to have a um, camera or you don't have to use your camera if you don't want to, but you certainly may. Um, and you don't even necessarily have to have a microphone. We can use it as a chat room where you can type your questions if you prefer that. Um, also, I can send you a telephone number to, to actually phone in. And so while I'll be on, on the screen, you know, you'll be calling in. Okay. Um, so those are options. But please, if you get in trouble, schedule an appointment with me. I, I, there are students with whom I work routinely, and their questions are not even that major, but they just prefer that, that contact, and I'm happy to do it. So schedule an appointment. Always communicate with me. If you get behind, don't just drop out and then suddenly reappear weeks later. At that point, it's too late for me to help you, okay, unless there's been a verifiable emergency. And by verifiable, I mean you have paperwork, you have documentation. Um, if you need help with the assignments, use the GNTC Tutoring Services or NetTutor. Let me show you how to find both. Okay, NetTutor is here in the bottom of your screen. Now we're going to use, um, this is my view rather than the student view, so you'll see that I've got more information than you do. But NetTutor doesn't work for me unless I'm in the instructor view. To launch it, you select NetTutor. 
here in the menu. And then again, don't show this message, continue. Please notice you have the option, not just for this course, but any type of course that you're taking, you can get help with it. All right, notice all these particular um, options here. The last option is the one that you write, want for if you're actually writing a paper for me and you're not quite sure what to do. Or if you have questions about something we're reading, literature, how to analyze or how to respond to something, you can select literature here. All right. And here are your options when you do. You can drop in and meet with a live tutor, just like in a chat room. All right. Or you can leave a paper and especially a paper about literature. You might want to do this because uh, these tutors are, have at least a master's degree, if not a PhD. Um, and they can help you uh, with a particular type of an assignment. Or you can leave a question and come back later to get the answer to it. And th then the literature locker is actually where anything that you've done in NetTutor is stored. Now, I'm not requiring that you use NetTutor, but everyone from my A students to students who struggle will use this service. So please be aware that it's available for you. All right. Now, to drop off a paper, if you select NetTutor, you have to give the paper a name. All right. Then tell them about the assignment. And I always give you guidelines that explain an assignment. So you can tell them what specifically is your um, you need, you know, this assignment calls for. If you are an ESL student, a student for whom English is not your first language, please check this box because they will find a tutor that can help with your specific um, language barrier problems if you have them. All right. Then next. Notice that you can select two areas that you want help with, they, and they will give you lots of feedback about these two areas. All right. Uh, and you answer how long the paper should be, um, paper type, narrative, persuasive, research, comparison, and so forth. So you tell them what type, the nature of the paper, citation style, and this particular course will be using modern language association style. Okay. Um, and we will be reviewing it before uh, the research paper. OK, so that's all you have to do. And then you um, the last thing that you do after you select is you upload your, your paper here. You need to give them usually about 48 hours. And within that time frame, they will get back to you with help. OK, so please be aware that this very important service is available to you and it's free of charge. Um, and again, I encourage students to use this assignment or this particular feature. Now, GNTC also offers um, tutoring services and that is available if we go to the GNTC homepage. Now, my homepage is going to look different from yours because I'm an instructor. Um, but notice here under Tools on the left-hand side of the screen, um, you have, there is a um, Blackboard Help for Students. And there is also Library Services. Um, one of the bulleted items as well is the um, help desk request form. If you are having technical problems, which I probably won't be able to ask me first, and if I can help you, I will. But um, if you are having trouble, um, select the help desk request form and Blackboard will and help you with any problems that you have. But here I, I skipped over it under tools, the tutoring assistance for GNTC. If you select this option, then you can um, and first you need to enroll, but then you can schedule a time to meet with a particular uh, GNTC tutor online and they can help you with any uh, problems that you have. All right. So I encourage you to do that. I give you a lot of feedback, but if you need additional assist assistance to be successful in this course, please use it. All right. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is um, if for some some reason, please be aware that um, Google Chrome and Firefox, um, Mozilla Firefox, are the two browsers that are um, 
supported through Blackboard. So if you're using a different browser, you may have trouble. Also, if you ever have trouble logging in, uh, and you get a screen that says something about, uh, I mean, there's some block there that will not allow you to log in. What you probably need to do is what we call clearing your cache uh, in order to, and that's clearing your browser history in order, and it resets your password and then you just need to enter it again. That's almost always the problem. Okay. So I hope that this particular um, overview has been useful to you. Um, and please do not hesitate to call me I, or, or to email me or to schedule an appointment. Uh, I do want to work with you. We have the same goal, which is to have you, uh, for you to be very successful this semester.